Alright hey everyone and welcome back to another video. Firstly, I hope you all had a wonderful time over the holiday period. So, today is December 28th 2021 and it's quite an important date for Sonic the Comic because today is the 20th anniversary of the final issue of Sonic the Comic. That's right, December 28th 2001, the very last issue of STC Hit News Agents, issue 223. Now, be sure to stick around until the end of this video as I've got an exclusive statement for the fans regarding this anniversary milestone from the legendary Sonic artist himself, Richard Elson. You don't want to miss it. Now, I've seen people over the years say that Sonic the Comic ended in 2001 and some people say 2002, and they're both technically correct. Issue 223's first day of retail was 28th of December 2001. It's actually right down here on the barcode, right above it. There we go. But um, as uh, with all issues of STC, it traded for 12 days. Some issues may have been a little longer, but it was always around this number. So issue 223's final day of trading was actually the 9th of January 2002. This is when news agents would have removed any unsold issues from the stands. So yeah, the last issue was released in 2001, but its last day of retail was 2002. Now, I never actually managed to get issue 223 during its release. It was a few years later that I managed to get my copy off eBay. This was the end of STC, and since issue 185, all the remaining issues from 185 to 223 only contained reprint stories from previous issues, though they all had brand new cover artworks drawn by Richard Elson, and the Graphic Zone made a brief return which showcased fan art sent in from fans, as well as a few competitions in a few issues, but otherwise issues 185 to 223 was mostly 90% recycled material. As you would imagine, the reprint issues didn't sell nowhere near as well compared to STC when it was at its peak. As a result, the reprint issues were not as mass produced as older issues, making the reprint issues today much harder and rarer to come by. Issues from this period always sell for much more money on eBay. I can compare it to going on eBay right now and trying to buy a copy of Sonic 1 on the Mega Drive or Genesis for you US folk and a copy of Sonic CD on the Mega CD. You will more than likely find both, but Sonic CD will be selling for considerably more money as much less copies were produced from a much less popular system compared to the Mega Drive Genesis. Back in 2001, there was only one retailer selling copies of Sonic the Comic that was available to me. This was a big Sainsbury's, which I could compare to you US folk to something like Walmart. And this Sainsbury's was six miles from me. Not really that accessible, especially as at that time I was really young. Compare this to the mid 90s when issues of STC was in every newsagent and supermarket around. Hell, even post offices had them. Getting an issue back then was a five minute walk for me. This is why I missed out on collecting a fair few of the reprint issues during its later years. So what I'm going to do is a little flip through the entire issue as well as show Nigel Kitchen's farewell message at the very end of the issue. For those that are unaware, Nigel Kitchen was the main writer for almost the entirety of Sonic the Comics run. Okay, so let's look at the cover itself first and the cover artwork for this is really, really awesome. Richard really went all out for his um, final piece of Sonic the Comic artwork because we've got a lot of characters here and a lot going on on this cover. It's really, really awesome. Um, unfortunately, the free gift that came with this issue has covered a considerable portion of this really awesome artwork itself, which is um, a real shame. This massive green rectangle, which um, on top of this was actually a free compass watch. You can see part of the sellotape and plastic is still on here, but I mean, look at this. This green rectangle completely covers most of the Drake and Prosecutor we've got here, and like a quarter of Robotnik's face is like, you know, completely missing. Um, I'm going to show you the clean uh, cover artwork for this in just a moment. But um, yeah, really, really awesome. I mean, Towers is kind of, this writing, it's pretty dramatic and awesome here, but Towers is really uh, hidden there. But uh, Sonic looks really cool there. I mean, look how angry he looks. 
It's as if it's angry that he knows his uh, comic is, uh, has come to an end. Now, although these were uh, issue 185 to 223 contained reprint stories, the cover artworks itself were based on what story was inside, but Richard gave it a twist and um, the characters that are on the cover are based on their modern forms, which, uh, you know, the character forms change during the Sonic Adventure arc, which is why Sonic has uh, green eyes. But yeah, really great characters here. We've got the Sentinel here. Uh, we've got Emperor Kodor and we've got loads of flickies and it's advertising a free gift. Now the free gifts towards the later end of Sonic the Comics run was pretty bizarre some of them. I mean who really wants like a you know a compass watch with an issue of Sonic the Comic? It's it's strange, but there were some really weird ones like uh, like vampire teeth and stuff. Um yeah. Um as I've said, we've already covered the date here. Now, the cost of this issue was £1.50. Um, so the price of Sonic the Comic did go up over the years. Issue 1 retailed at 95 pence. So it didn't go up considerably amount during its 223 run. Um, literally 55 pence, which um, I know obviously during the, the late 90s, the early 2000s with inflation, that's obviously more. But it's still really cheap, especially comparing it to video game magazines or uh, uh, even around that era, which was around 3 to £5 pounds still. Um, so really good value for um, what you was getting here with uh, a comic. Um, this is actually a double um, of my issue 223. I have um, a complete mint condition copy of this with the free gift which I'm going to show you uh, as well in a moment as well as the clean cover artwork. But yeah, this was more accessible for me to get out of because this one's not in a sealed um, backing board with a sleeve. Alright, so here is my near mint condition copy of 223 and you get a good look of the actual free gift itself here which is of course the compass watch as I've already said. Um, it's a really random gift and it's quite a big gift to have strapped onto an issue but yeah this is what it would have looked like um, in retail shops trading. And here is the clean version of the cover artwork and um, it is really really awesome and you can see just how much of this incredible artwork was actually cut out on the actual cover of the issue really really awesome stuff okay so let's finally get into the issue itself and you can see as soon as we open it we get straight into the story now I can't remember which issue it started originally but it was around the 170 ish mark and it went into the reprint issues we had a data zone on page one and what the data zone was I have another issue here, which was another one of the reprint issues. This was actually issue 204. The data design would be on page one, which would give you a little bit of an introduction to um, the characters that were inside it. I was always uh, confused with the artwork they chose to put here. You've got obviously Sonic the Comic um, artwork here for Sonic, which totally makes sense, and Knuckles, but then we've got like stock art from Sonic Adventure Tau's artwork being used here. Uh, Robotnik and Grimer of course makes sense. And at the top here we've got, you know, the game version of uh, Dr. Robotnik here. It was always a little bit strange. Clearly not as much uh, uh, effort or detail I should say was put into this, uh, the data zone for the correct artwork, but yeah. As the reprint issues went on, more and more was like literally cut out. And as you can see, by the time we got to issue 223, there's not even a data zone. We are straight into the uh, story. So this issue, 223, contained the complete arc of the Evil Empire, which contained part one, two, three, and four. Now, this story originally ran from issues 108 to 111 and was, in, uh, was released uh, in 1997. And this is a really uh, memorable arc which features uh, Sonic vs. Uh, Metal Knuckles, Metallic Knuckles. And we've got like the big drastic return of Dr. Robotnik here from the Mobius ring. Unfortunately, look, you can see the sellotape. Obviously this is 20 years old now, it's kind of like morphed into the actual comic itself, which is uh, a real shame. If I was to try to peel this off now, the comic would be literally ruined completely. Yeah, never ever use sellotape on comics. It's just uh, a worst nightmare. You can see the years, it's just morphed through, unfortunately. 
So yeah, we've got absolutely incredible artwork here from uh, Richard Elson. He did the artwork for all the stories in this issue. And this was actually the first uh, issue for Richard Elson style for the redesign of the Sonic characters around this time, which was based more so on the Sonic 3D Flicky's Island box art, which is where we get the very famously known Sonic with his spikes pointing upwards. You'll start seeing more of it as we go through. There's a few other subtle changes for other characters. For instance, Robotnik's um, head now is uh, more lower down his body as, a bo as opposed to being on the top of it, and he's uh, considerably fatter now as well. So great artwork here as always from the Kinterborg computer. We've got some towels and um, Amy here. Literally I could sit here and talk about just how great this artwork is uh, all day, but I'm sure you don't want to sit here and um, hear me talking about that for hours upon hours. Now here's a prime example of um, <clears throat> some of the changes to the reprint issues and like the lack of detail that they had here from like, obviously the editors and where when it was going to go into the printing. It's like you can see Towers is talking about that Robotnik was captured by the Draken Prosecutor. He's like, but, 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 you were captured and taken away by that Prosecutor creature. And the original issue um, itself, issue, issue 108, would have given you a recap of um, the issue of when he got captured away. But literally, these reprint issues, someone I guess has got Tipex and just uh, removed it before it was reprinted. And you can see they haven't even like removed it all entirely. You can still see some of the text on there, like little dots of the black ink. So like, if you've never read the entire issue, you're wondering, what on earth is these little like, white squares here? They don't even have anything to do with the story. So yeah really cool dynamic pose of Sonic there and here we get the first introduction to Metallic's Knuckles with a really awesome uh, whole page uh, spread of him and that is just incredible detail here I absolutely love this artwork and for those that are curious this does actually predate uh, Metal Knuckles in Sonic R Of course, we saw the blueprints of Metal Knuckles shown to us during the final part of the Brotherhood of Metallics arc, which was uh, several years prior to it, but this is our first introduction to the character in the flesh. Sonic's obviously, you know, like, you're crazy, Robotnik. What are you doing doing the Metallics again? You remember they turned against you? And he's like, oh, you know, I've learned from my mistakes, Sonic. This won't happen again. And Metallics actually defeats Sonic quite easily. So choking him out and then throws him, completely knocking him uh, unconscious. And that's the end of part one. Look, it doesn't even say like a recap of like, this would have been like, oh, in the next issue and then the title. And then it just goes straight to the next story. There's no like page in between advertising or you'd have had the graphic zone. For so yeah, here we go straight into uh, the Evil Empire part two. Emperor Kodor, I think quite an underrated character. Most people don't kind of remember him. Now, this is quite interesting. It looks like someone forgot to remove the, uh, the speech bubble here, because this one actually has the original recap, which is a great example. Look. So someone obviously forgot to erase that part. We've got Robotnik visiting Sonic in um, Dragon Prison. Just the detail and artwork of it. Richard Elson's artwork is just absolutely incredible. And here we have Metal Knuckles being powered up, ready for his battle. Evil Empire Part 3. So I covered this story very much in detail uh, in my retrospective video on the run to Godhood, the journey of Dr. Robotnik. So if you want to see me talk about this issue and everything that happens in it from Robotnik's side, um, I will have a link in the description.
And really, really great uh, fight between Sonic and Metal Knuckles. And we get some really awesome uh, artwork in here from it. We've got another uh, full, full page of uh, Metallic's Knuckles using his uh, Death Ray to hit Sonic there. You've got Sonic, Kodor, and Grimer. And these were still uh, hand painted uh, pages around this time. It was, um, I think it was issue 125 that Richard finally went full digital. So it's quite close to the end of his uh, traditional hand painted artworks, being 108 to 111. I mean, look at the the botch job of that of someone someone's literally just got that like, tip X and just gone whoop. you can't even make out some of the words still yeah some of the reprint issues were quite famously known for just how like rushed and sort of a quick cash job they were there's like some of the pages had uh, some uh, incorrect colors it was like a, it, as if it was like an Instagram filter over it and the colors were all wrong and there was one issue that the page was actually ripped out and somehow that got into the printing press and every issue that was released of it uh, had a page missing it had literally like ripped the, the page would like literally been ripped out it was really weird and I remember at the time thinking I'd picked up a defective issue but it wasn't until the following issue that come out um, they actually issued an apology uh, because of it Super embarrassing, really, especially when you think of what Sonic the Comic, uh, what Fleetway was doing with Sonic the Comic at the run, and like what it had, uh, what it had come to. Um, this is an absolutely incredible uh, double spread page. This is actually Richard Elson's favourite uh, double spread page he did for Sonic the Comic. Double spread being the entire page, but entire two pages to one uh, image. And um, uh, how many did Richard Elson do double spread pages? Um, but it's a bit of a shame because it looks like when they were scanning this issue for the reprint, it's got like almost like a really high level of contrast on it because when you look at the original issue for this, the, Sonic's face is not this contrastedly exposed here. So um, again, a bit of a shame, but still you can get a real look at it. Just how awesome this is! Check out the original uh, issue of this issue 111, and the 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 page quality looks a lot better. Robotnik there, Grimer in the corner, and of course Kodor, Metal Knuckles, and we come to the end of the fight, which amazingly Towels is the one that actually defeats Metallic's Knuckles, to everyone's surprise. There you go. And then we realise that the Drakens are actually fish in robotic bodies. And this brings us to the end of the Evil Empire arc. Really, really awesome arc. Bit of an unusual one to end Sonic the Comic on. Mostly because it ends on a cliffhanger. Because it's like, uh, you know... Code or saying, oh, this, you know, the prosecutor's going to take you back to Mobius Sonic. And Sonic's like, okay, pal, but just remember, if you support uh, Robotnik, you're still my enemy. And in other words, you haven't seen the last of this hedgehog, which was setting up to where the Draken arc was going to go next. And um, it obviously, someone's obviously actually put something in here this time. It's been tipexed out because it would have advertised what the next issue is, and someone's wrote the end, which. Um, Unfortunately, uh, synthesizes that that actually was the end of Sonic the Comic. Now, some people might consider issue 184 to be the end of Sonic the Comic. And I say that because issue 184 was the final new story to be printed in Sonic the Comic, which was the finale of the Sonic Adventure arc um, titled Point of No Return. And uh, issue 184 was released the 28th of June 2000. So, to be fair, that issue was the end of the Sonic uh, Sonic's journey for the Sonic the Comic universe, but of course this issue was you know the final released issue of Sonic the Comic, even if it was in reprint form. 
And then finally, we come to the uh, farewell message from Nigel Kitchen. And a lot of people completely forgot or missed it that Nigel Kitchen even did um, a farewell message for his time uh, at Fleetway's sign of the comic. And I'm going to read um, this out entirely for you, for those that can't be bothered to read it, because the text is quite small. So we'll start here at the top here. In 1993, the first edition of Sonic the Comic was published and it was an immediate hit. 223 issues and 5 million copies sold later, we have sadly reached the final edition. A full list of the dedicated STC creators and contri who contributed to the success of the title appears bottom right. But first, writer Nigel Kitchen remembers his part in the success of Sonic the Comic. Now firstly, I think people don't realise just how big Sonic the Comic was during its run in the UK. This comic series sold 5 million issues. Now this was a day before the internet was even readily available, so this comic spread essentially from word of mouth. There was no internet in like, promoting it. And right in the towers of just how popular Sonic the Hedgehog was in the 90s. Five million copies is absolutely an insane amount of sales when you think that the United Kingdom is a tiny country compared to uh, the United States. Like Literally, the United Kingdom is smaller than just the state of California. And when you look at sales of comics of today, even maybe some of the new comics, Sonic comics that are out now, you'll see that you know for an entire global sales that even Sonic the comic is outselling from just a tiny little country like the UK, it, uh, it's hard to comprehend just how popular Sonic the comic was, especially during its peak. Anyway. Let's get straight into Nigel's message. So, the first issue of Sonic the Comic was dated to 29th of May. This just happens to be my birthday, and I've always felt it was an omen of some kind. But omen or not, I would never have guessed that I would end up writing the adventures of the cool blue hedgehog for around seven years. My first story appeared in issue 4 and to be honest it was a fairly ordinary little adventure involving a sonic shaped badnik. And I'm back again in issue 6 with another pretty unremarkable tale of Sonic attacking the Death Egg. These first two stories did have little touches I liked. The relationship between Sonic and Tails was quite interesting. I remember wondering if I could get away with having Sonic treat Tails quite rudely. I wanted Sonic to be a flawed hero. I also made an effort to have my stories to be pretty serious rather than humorous. I knew that the readers took Sonic seriously no matter how cute he may look. Cute or not, he was still the hero. Very interesting, right? Even this, a 20 year old uh, statement from Nigel Kitchen. And, um, you know, the people who write the Sonic games now still can't understand, you know, just how to make Sonic successful when we look at what we've got. But that's a title for a no, a no, uh, another video entirely. But after my first two stories, one thing had become frighteningly obvious to me. I had no more ideas for Sonic. Writing this strip for any period of time was going to be impossible. Breakthrough. But just in time, a couple of things happened. The first was, the first was I had a meeting with editor Richard Burton, where we talked about a new direction for Sonic in which Robotnik would become the dictator of Mobius, and Sonic would form a gang of freedom fighters. Suddenly, the possibility of far more interesting stories presented itself. The second thing was the arrival of the artist Richard Elson. Without Rich, I don't think we'd have had anything like the success we did, and I completely 100% agree with that. His art was fantastic, Sonic really moved and the stories looked really exciting. Rich and I became good friends and I'd got into a habit of telephoning him before I began writing. We began my writing. I did this for two reasons. The first was to try to tailor my stories to his interests. There's nothing worse than being given a script full of stuff you hate to draw. The second reason was so that we could talk about ideas. Lots of the ideas in my scripts I would never have been able to come up with without having Rich to chat with. In fact, some of the ideas were entirely down to Rich. So after a couple of full starts, Rich and I were off to working as a team and producing stuff that I think we were both pretty proud of. New characters. 
Over the next 10 issues or so, we really hit our stride. We introduced new characters like the Marxio brothers and Captain Plunder, and we also brought in more characters from the games, such as Amy and Metal Sonic, whom we named Metallics. The Metallic story stretched over five issues. I had been pushing for longer stories for a while, and this was my chance to prove they would be popular. Fellow writer Lou Stringer arrived on the Sonic strip with issue 30. Lou used my con continuity, but found his own way of doing things by populating the strip with his own characters like Metamorphia and Shortfuse. Shortfuse was probably the most popular character that anyone created for the Sonic strip, and he made many appearances. The next, the next step was to introduce Knuckles, which Rich and I did in issue 33. This was another nice long run of connected stories that led up to issue 39. In these issues, I must have been asked to write a one-off seven-page story. I tried my best, but I've got to be honest, Sonic No More was a bit of a letdown. Uh, the title, the, the strip Sonic No More was uh, where Sonic uh, Robotnik had absorbed Sonic's powers and Sonic returned to his brown form and Robotnik had literally turned into like a almost blue version of himself with Sonic speed. But things improved with the next story, a loose adaptation of the latest Sonic game, Sonic and Knuckles, lots of bad necks, islands in the sky and chaos emeralds. From meeting the fans at conventions, I know that this went down very well. Epic Tau now we come to the Brotherhood of Metallic story. I had a lot of fun with this one. The basic idea was that the Metallics, uh, the Metallics built more robots like him and turned on his master Robotnik. This was a long story in two segments. In between was a four-parter, Project Brutus by Lou. This turned out to be one of Lou's most popular. Uh, I couldn't agree more. The uh, Brutus arc is one of my favorite stories from Sonic the Comic and without a doubt, one of my favorite Lou Stringer stories. The metallic story wound up being 10 parts long. It brought in Chaotix and more time travel. All in all, it was quite an epic. It was never planned to be 10 parts. This took a lot of negotiating on my part and a lot of trust on the part of the editor who was at this time, Deborah Tate. Following this was a bunch of one-off stories, but this time I seemed to cope with them better. In fact, a couple of these, Smokey and the Badneck and The Big Decision, I'm rather proud of. The second of these stories was about Porker Lewis basically having a nervous breakdown. One of the things that was always on the back of my mind when I wrote Sonic was that we should show the consequences of constantly being at war with Robotnik. Every now and again we needed to have something happen that really affected our heroes. Issue 80 has the first part of Running Wild and these three parts plus the following three parts Following three part, heroes and villains make up one of my favourite stories involving Sonic being split into two characters, himself and his evil demon self, Super Sonic. Rich and I had a big input on this. I don't remember who thought of which idea, uh, sorry, I don't always remember who thought of which idea, but I clearly remember it was Rich's idea to have Sonic split this way. He also supplied an array of supporting villains for whom I only had to make up personalities. Referring to um, Lord Sidewinder and his uh, associates. Issue 100. We were now rapidly heading towards issue 100 and I was writing my epics and Lou was finding a way of writing his own brand of Sonic Adventures. He gave us a whole series of different characters and situations including Game Over which I think is one of Lou's best. Again, couldn't agree more. I've mainly talked about my own stuff here because basically that's what I remember best. Anyway, I wanted issue 100 to be something special, not just a big story, but something that really changed the setup. It had always bothered me that no matter how many times Sonic won, Robotnik was still in power and he still remained as the dictator of Mobius. Maybe it was time to change that. So in issue 100, Sonic finally beats Robotnik. Lou and I pulled all of the other Sonic related strips into the plot and came up with one story that filled the entire issue. Two writers and four artists all working on the same story. It was a bit of a nightmare, but it worked out really well. Deborah Tate even let me draw the final part of the story. It wasn't a classic piece of art, but I got away with it. The next big story from Rich and me involved the creation of the Draken Empire. 
In hindsight, my idea for the Draken Empire might have been a bit too ambitious. Still, we got a few stories out of the characters and I'm very pleased with. The Draken Empire became the major villains and Robotnik was put into a position of having to try to manipulate them. He almost succeeded when he tricked them into getting the Chaos Emeralds for him. He used the Chaos Emeralds to become a god, but of course it all went horribly wrong. And then we come to Johnny Lightfoot. A new editor, Andy Dingle, asked me for ideas for 10 issues. I'd never been given this much space before. For the first time, I was able to plan ahead in advance. The most controversial idea I had was to bump off Johnny Lightfoot. I had nothing against Johnny, you understand. I just wanted to do a story where one of the heroes doesn't make it. This was the darkest Sonic story so far. The Chaos Monster was scary and Sonic was in trouble. The plot was very loosely based off the latest Sonic game, but most of what we actually most of what actually happened was from me and Rich. I got to do a lot of things that I've always wanted to do. I was particularly pleased to finally show where Knuckles came from and his ancient race of echidnas. I also finally tied up the loose ends regarding Super Sonic. That 10 part story was a great way to wind up my 7 years with the Hedgehog and I'm very grateful that I got the chance. And now Sonic the Comic has reached its last issue, 223 editions, nearly 9 years of publishing. It is really an extraordinary achievement and I'm proud to have played my part in that success. And you readers should all be proud of your part in it too. It's an old cliche but we couldn't have done it without you, Nigel Kitchen. And then we reach the roll call. Many talented people have contributed to the success of Sonic the Comic over the years. Take a bow, Sonic Team. And here is the credits that was mentioned at the very start of this dedication. You've got all the editors, designers, writers, artists, and letterers. Uh, I always credit these very fine people in every Sonic the Comic video I upload here on YouTube. Um, unfortunately, some of these people are no longer with us anymore, but their work will always be remembered. And then we finally reach this. The fun isn't over yet. Boomers, turn the page over for news of a new magazine that's 100% fun. It's the one. And this is what it's referring to. The only actual advertisement in this comic, 100% fun, the one, and yeah. I don't think anyone remembers this magazine. I sure as, uh, I sure don't. Um, I never picked this up. I think I always remember getting to the back page of this and seeing this and being utterly disappointed that this is what we was going to get instead of Sonic the Comic. Yeah. And that brings us to the end of the issue, and um, you can see Nigel's, he's, he's, he's quite sad of course, you can tell Harry's wrote this, that you know, it's it's all come to an end, but he's, he's obviously had a lot of fun, and he's made some really good friends while doing this, and he's also very happy that he was able to bring a conclusion to his amazing work that he did uh, in Sonic the Comic. And that brings us to the end of issue 223. Now I know you've all been waiting for it and here is Richard Elson's exclusive statement that you'll only find here on Sonic the Comic Reviews regarding the 20th anniversary of the finale of Sonic the Comic. Now I'm going to read it out but I'm also going to put it on uh, text uh, on the screen here for those that want to uh, read it as well. To be honest, the final chaos story that Nigel and I did and the epic Lou Stringer story that preceded it are two of the pieces of work I am still most pleased with. It is immensely satisfying that we got to finish the run of original stories in STC in a way that was meaningful. It's amazing to think that it is now 20 years. Even if I had to shuffle off this planet tomorrow, I could hold up that handful of comics and say, I may not have achieved anything of greatness in my life, but at least me and my good friends got to do this. I am, as you may be able to tell, genuinely proud of those comics. Thanks to the many kind, generous people who have taken time to tell us how much our work on STC and those stories in particular meant to them. And a special thanks to you for keeping the memory of STC alive and everybody who still has interest of the Sonic universe that we were so lucky to get to work on 20 years ago. It was truly a wonderful time. 
And that's it guys, what a really awesome statement from Richard Elson and I want to thank Richard very much for taking time out of his day to contribute to this video. And with that we bring this video to a close. This will probably be the last video of 2021 guys, so I want to wish you all a very happy new year. Um, I know this video went on for a lot longer than I was originally planning to, but thank you for watching this video, especially if you made it all the way to the end. If you enjoyed it, then a thumbs up is always much appreciated. Take care guys, and see you in the new year.